Hello everyone, it is me Vegeta T23 and welcome back to my new what if. Today we're talking about what if Vegeta was born with divine key. Before I start I'd like to mention that I created a discord server for you to join. The link is in the description of this video so if you'd like to join in and talk to me and the rest of my fans, it's there. I'd also like to mention that I created an Instagram so you can survey my very uninteresting life. I mainly post Osu stuff. Now back to the video. In the last part we discussed on how Vegeta, Nappa, Goku, Krillin and Bulma all went to Namek once Bulma built the machine. Vegeta pretended to still be with Frieza while his newfound friends wish for Frieza to disappear. Vegeta intentionally asked to guard the Namekian Dragon Balls and then gave them to his team while he performed a basically a suicide attack to cover them. Frieza was livid but Vegeta turned insane when he turned into a false Super Saiyan Rose. He got defeated the first time but the second time after he got the Zenkai he pounded Frieza into the ground killing him for good. With the recap out of the way, let's continue the what if. Vegeta woke up, surrounded by his squad. They all wondered on how he's still alive. Vegeta got up with all them in spacesuits and him in regular torn Saiyan armor. Vegeta asked why are they so dressed up, saying that they're not in space, they're actually like atmosphere of Namek still. Boba replied that how the truth is... They're not really in the atmosphere, in fact the atmosphere is 50,000 miles away from Namek. Vegeta got confused starting to argue the fact that he can breathe just as normally as if he's on a planet with an oxygen rich atmosphere. The squad got confused by Vegeta being the only one that can breathe if the meter is showing a pretty much full vacuum, but paid no more attention to it than they already have and they departed home. On their way home, the Saiyans trained more and managed to ruin the gravity machine even more, meaning Bulma had to endure up to 5-7 to seven times normal gravity. Also, this is the first time Vegeta and Bulma had any sexual interactions, meaning Vegeta's been getting that booty on the side of training. When they got home, Vegeta and Bulma had a wedding ceremony, with Vegeta having Nappa as his man and Bulma having Chi Chi as her girl for the wedding which made Goku family to Vegeta in a way. Setting that aside, they had plenty of peace time on Earth, as opposed to Capsule Corp where Vegeta is training vigorously and has been doing that for the past year and a half, as well as taking care of his very very young son Trunks, who is about to turn 1 year old. The peace hasn't really lasted very long as Goku noticed a very familiar key, as well as a ship coming Earth's way. He immediately rushed the Capsule Corp, warning Vegeta of it. Vegeta was so focused on training that he didn't even realize it, but now, he goes along with Goku. Nappa too soon follows. As the three arrive, they already see a skirmish happening between a young kid and King Cole, who is brutally beaten up by the kid. Boma too soon follows with Baby Trunks and sees it all unfold. The kid sees Little Trunks then lets out a breath and then introduces himself as Trunks. He explains all his time travel bullshit and lets the squad take it as a grain of salt, which they well, basically do considering the fact that they never witnessed it, so Trunks attempts to prove it with the medicine, his time machine and all the other bullshit, also saying that he'd be very secretive if his younger self wasn't born yet, explaining the reason behind him sighing when he was himself. They managed to believe it and then Trunks went on to the story about the whole android thing, Jiro and all the other bullshit. Goku takes the medicine, Vegeta and Bulma get a hug and Nappa gets a nice handshake. Nappa is confused but performs it anyway. Trunks then tells them all his goodbyes as his part is done, telling them he may come back to check in on the situation. Everyone waves their goodbyes as Trunks' time machine disappears into thin air. After 3 years of very intense training, they cautiously wait for the androids to arrive as they wait in the outskirts. Bulma comes over with Kid Trunks in her arms. Goku arrives too with Vegeta and Nappa in tow. Vegeta swears to destroy the androids all by himself and Nappa is just standing there, a little annoyed by Vegeta's constant battle of 
Oh, I'm gonna destroy those androids, and you can't stop me. And all the other bullshit, while Goku is slightly panting. Nappa asks what's wrong, and Goku just says that he just finished his training, so he feels a little tired out. With our squad satisfied, they wait for a sign of something even remotely close to the androids. So all of a sudden, there's a big ass explosion in the city, claiming that's their doing as they go search, only to realize they can't really sense anything. Eventually, Yamcha does find the androids, but is then beaten up badly, pretty much stabbed just like a cannon, leaving him on the ground. Nappa arrives and almost goes nuts, however Vegeta goes blonde, turning into a Super Saiyan as well, and now we're in business as Vegeta goes and chases the androids out of town, catching the attention of everyone who then follow. In the outskirts, far away from anything, they have a little talk. As Vegeta attacks and 19 gets in the way, which Vegeta just punches away easily, punching his head off in a single second, he then goes after 20 and starts going at it. He simply cannot resist killing them, thinking that's all that remains. However, Trunks comes in, wondering how those androids are here and not the other two he had in his timeline. Just when Vegeta destroys Jiro, Trunks intervenes saying that these androids could lead them to the real ones. Vegeta gets pissed, asking Trunks on why didn't he just say so. Trunks says that there are two that are in his timeline that would also hit in this one. Trunks then recommends they should find those androids, which are in Dr. Jiro's secret lab, to which Bulma shines a little light on the situation, knowing where it is, so they head there. In the lab, they see three capsules and an incubator. The capsules contain the androids, while the incubator contains an embryo. Trunks immediately knows this is Cell and destroys it right there. Bulma is getting annoyed on why and Trunks just stares at the wall not saying a thing. Bulma just took it and went on to look at the androids that were sealed away. Seeing them and seeing the complex codes used for them really piqued Bulma's interest as she has a strong desire to turn them back to normal where they are away from any bad influence and are free to do as they please as she recognizes the two Trunks told them about being much like enhanced humans and the other one to be a fully rebuilt version of Jiro's son who died. Trunks wanted to destroy them while he still can, but Bulma says not to as she can figure out a way to get them back to normal and help them with whatever comes their way. After tinkering with the androids, Bulma releases them all, with having no urge programmed in them, no task. They get up and look around and 18 comments, wow, so Jabro is gone? That's a relief. 16, 17 and 18 all introduce themselves and show gratitude. Bulma goes as far as talking them in to stay at Capsule Corp, while Trunks sees just how tables can turn with a smart mom around. At Capsule Corp, Lazuli or 18 decides to take a job at a corporate and Lapis, 17, decides he will go in the wilderness, see if he can occupy his mind with something, and 16 develops a strong love for nature and decides to follow Lapis just because Lapis is going to the wilderness. Bulma then goes back to the lab with future Trunks to see if anything remained that they might have missed, leaving baby Trunks with Vegeta who is angry that a warrior doesn't have time for kids. At the lab they search around the premises and after searching and almost giving up, they find a Mossed Time Machine, which Trunks recognizes almost instantly, as well as Bulma. He thinks that someone must have traveled back here, attempting to find a spot with hope written on it, confirming his claims. He knows something is wrong and that a threat is nearing. Actually, it's right up on a mountain as it calls out for him. Trunks trembles as he can hear that voice from anywhere. Cell from another timeline has appeared and is questioning Trunks. Goku also arrives as well as Vegeta and Nappa to see what's going on as they see a green bug man standing on a hill. Goku decides to fight it, still gassed out, as they initiate a battle. At first, it seems that they're on par with one another, but that's far from being on par because Goku is getting unexpectedly weaker and weaker while Cell goes and mops the floor with Goku. Goku, however, doesn't give up and stands up, grabbing his chest. Trunks witnesses the heart disease firsthand and rushes over to pick him up and take him back to Capsule Corp. With that, Vegeta and Nappa stand up and both Vegeta and Nappa power up into their own Super Saiyan forms and Vegeta goes first, 
wanting to end him in one punch. However, the Bugman is quite skilled on his own level as he dodges every punch before bursting out a yellow aura, knocking the two away. So then proceeds to pummel both Saiyans to the ground, leaving them completely dumbfound. And with that, we're leaving things be for now. Thank you for watching. If you think I'm not made to be on YouTube, then click dislike. But if you liked the video, hit that like button. If you'd like me to cover your idea in the near future, comment down below. And as always, peace out.